So today we are going to have a look at the next experiment which is basically a mixer. So we will be dealing with the design of a mixer. What's a mixer? A mixer is basically an electronic circuit in which when two signals of different frequencies are put inside at the output we get signals which are having frequencies which are either an addition of these two frequencies or subtraction of these two frequencies or even harmonics of these two frequencies so basically in a mixer two signals of different frequencies when put inside generate a single signal which has either the addition of the two frequencies or subtraction of the two frequencies or harmonics. What is the basic nature of the electronic circuits that are used in mixer? Basically the mixer requires the working of a nonlinear element. What's a nonlinear element? Nonlinear element can be always characterized with the help of the input output relationship or the characteristics of any circuit or any element, circuit element. For example, there can be a linear relationship between input and output which is represented something like this. Here you can see that the output is directly proportional to input so if input is this much if input is this much then output will be this much if input is this much then the output will be this much so it's a pretty linear relationship between input and output characteristics uh, input output characteristics and a resistor is basically a, such a linear element. Now when we are talking about a nonlinear characteristics the nonlinear characteristics basically looks like this where this curved nature has come because the output voltage or the output current is proportional to some power of the input voltage. And that makes this a nonlinear circuit. This a nonlinear characteristic, as you can see, why this is called linear. It's a straight, and this is nonlinear because this is not straight. And because of this nonlinear characteristic, you know, the square of the input is basically what is coming. Uh, not square. Some power of the input is what is coming at the output. What happens because of this? Let's have a look. Suppose if the input voltage that I have given is a combination of two signals. A signal which is having a frequency omega 1 and another signal which is having a frequency of omega 2. And to take the basic nonlinear relation, let us say that the output voltage is related to the square of the input voltage. In that case, what we see is we have to take the square of this combination of signal 1 and signal 2 and when we do that mathematically you can expand it to this form a square plus b square plus 2ab which when rearranged rearranged in the sense when cos square is converted to 1 plus cos 2 theta divided by 2 and similarly this one and this is if taken as cos A cos B then you can get something you know like this then what we can see here is that even though the input was having only two frequencies omega 1 and omega 2 only two frequencies omega 1 and omega 2 the output f signal is having now twice of omega 1 twice of omega 2 which are basically the harmonics of this omega 1 and omega 2 and the addition and the difference frequencies of these two 
signal frequencies that's why I said that a mixer is basically a you know a circuit wherein when you put two signals of different frequencies omega 1 and omega 2 at the output you will get the sum the difference and the harmonics so a mixer requires a nonlinear element so when I'm talking about the mixer uh, if I'm talking about a linear circuit which is not a mixer the output frequency spectrum will look like this wherein I will get one peak representing this cause and a peak at omega 2 representing omega 2 and at the output of the mixer I will not be getting a simple you know spectrum as I have got here instead I will get a spectrum like this where obviously these two are omega 1 frequency omega 2 frequency but we have additional frequencies which are basically you know twice omega 1 twice omega 2 and then an omega 1 minus omega 2 frequency and then an omega 1 plus omega 2 frequency so the positions may vary a little bit because you know we don't know what is the value of omega 1 omega 2 so based on that there can be slight variations in this but basically you'll be having all these frequencies and I need not explain what will happen if you know if this is not the square if it is uh, you know cubical if it's cube of V in if V out is cube of V in you will have many more frequencies here so basically this nature that is V out is some power of V in is required that is nonlinearity is required for proper operation of a mixer so as I said uh, nonlinearity that we have seen here that means let me take you back that we have seen here can be this characteristic you know can be obtained from a diode if you talk about the voltage across diode and the current passing through diode this is a relation and you know if you uh, if you try to look that relationship is also nonlinear in nature and similarly we have the case of a transistor also which is basically of our interest for example if you are having a transistor which is working in CE mode then the relationship between the base current IB and the VBE voltage is basically given by this and if we are able to operate somewhere around this region we can say that we have a chance for getting the output which is nonlinear in nature that means if we are talking about the output here and the input here then we have a chance of getting uh, a nonlinear if we you know if we are able to give the signal here why because basically this IB and VBE this IB and VBE are related by this and here you have got the nonlinearity. So basically I require that my VBE voltage some should be somewhere you know near 0.6 and my current should be somewhere you know very less than this 10 microamps. Now this is for some transistor we don't know which transistor I have basically taken it from the net. Well we are going to use a BC547 so we will have to look into its uh, what do you say data sheet to find out you know which current we need to basically take in anyway you can see that the current values is very low in between 0 and 10 so if I have to make this transistor work for this particular value of IB you, we all know that you know the transistor has to be biased to an operating condition the biasing is basically given by the Q point which is given by a particular value of IC and a particular value of VCE how we all are very familiar with this particular graph you know, VCE versus IC for different values of IB 
and as I said I want to take very small values of IB very small values of IB will come you know between 0 and 10 so it should be somewhere here eh? somewhere here and I want my operating point you know somewhere to be lying somewhere let's say here so according to that the value of IC will you know have some value and based on that some VC value will be there and if I'm talking about the load line the load line will be this and we know that you know according to the changing value of IB you know when IB changes from 0 to 10 micron basically the operating point will move along the line and if I'm trying to change IB by giving an input then you can see that it will go somewhere here and in this non-linearity region the output that I will be getting that is when I am when I'm trying to look at what will happen at you know IC the IC that is coming you know because of this uh, because of this the the IC variation that I am getting here it's going to be basically non-linear in nature and that is going to give me all these different different frequencies that I desire for so let's design it basically this is the mixer that we are going to work with wherein you are having uh, the transistor working in C mode so these two are the biasing resistors and this is the emitter resistor which helps in also the biasing and then we have to have two signal inputs mixer requires two signal inputs so the first signal will come from here another signal will come from here and this one kilo ohm is basically to restrict the amount of uh, current that is going to be pushed inside so as such uh, I have not kept it in the design I have straight away given the value as 1k and then we have this why do we have this that I'll explain in the end anyway this together will form a basic transistor which is working you know in that operating point that we have fixed so we have to design it now so as I said the value of IB should be very very small let me show you again the value of IB should be very very small for the non-linearity region to operate plus VBE should also be at 0.6 basically it will be between 0.6 and 0.8 you can say but generally we want it to be between you know near to 0.6 and IB to be very very less value now looking at the data sheet of BC547 first for selecting the value of IB which should be somewhere between 0 and 10 microns we have selected the IB value to be 2.5 microamps let it be 2.5 microamps now if the value of beta for BC547 is taken as 100 then the value of the current that is flowing through the collector that is the collector current IC we all know is given by beta times IB it is given by beta times IB so this multiplied by 100 will give me 0.25 milliamps so my IC is 0.25 milliamps so you know one of the parameters of the Q uh, of the Q point the IC I have almost fixed and then we have to fix VCE which we will take approximately to be 80% of VCE see if this had to be working in the you know linear region uh, that means if I wanted this transistor to work as a linear amplifier then I would not have taken 80 percentage if you remember tuned amplifier we took 40 percentage almost 40 percentage of this is VCC eh? this is VCC this is VCC so if VCC is taken as 12 volt then 80 percentage of this would come you know close to 9.6 volts 
so if it is 9.6 volts VCE then I have fixed the value of VC and IC to be these two values and that is my Q point so the Q point you know again let me remind you the Q point will help us this this red point is the Q point and the fixation of that will help us to set the biasing of the transistor so now the Q point is here for any additional IB value that is going to flow we are going to have non-linearity so for any additional value of IB that is going to flow because of this voltage source we'll have a extra current IB which will give us a non-linearity okay next what should be the you know, RE value for that if IC current I have already decided then we know that IE is going to be approximately you know equal to IC and then there is no voltage drop here only voltage drop is between these two you know for the biasing case I am not considering about this one because this is not there for biasing biasing is basically between R you no know, R2 R1 RE transistor and if there would have been a resistor here but there is no resistor here so I will say that there is no load drop that is happening here basically the load drop is happening between these two and uh, I can say that since I have taken 80 percentage to be the CE voltage you no know, 80 percent eh, the rest of the 20 should come here so this is again VCC so 20 percentage of VCC and that will you know if VCC we know that it is 12 volt so it will come almost as 2.4 volt and that should be equal to the you know voltage drop across this so voltage drop will be current that is beta plus 1 IB that is IE current eh, that multiplied by RE value so beta we know it's 100 IB we have already decided it to be 0.25 so the value of RE we can find out from this which comes come back close to 9.5 K which can be approximated as a 10 K value next you know we have to design the value of R1 R2 for that I have you know previous in the case of tuned amplifier I have used another technique here I am using another technique here I have what I have done is I have taken this biasing circuit this much a this much part and I have made a Thevenin's equivalent for it so the Thevenin's equivalent you know is basically uh, is basically a resistance RTH and a voltage VTH the Thevenin's voltage and the and the Thevenin's resistance RTH the value of RTH we know is basically the parallel combination of R1 R2 and VTH will be the voltage across R1 sorry I have made a mistake here this should be R1 the voltage drop R1 by R1 plus R2 of VCC now based on that if I am trying to you know take this loop then I can write a KVL for it which will come something like you know VTH that is this is equal to IB current that is flowing to RTH plus VBE plus VBE and then the voltage across RE that is VRE so this particular equation I have written for the KVL along this loop IB value we already know VB we know should be somewhere 0 0.6 VRE we had already seen previously as 20 percentage of VCC which came to close to 2.4 value so VTH and RTH that is required 
is decided by this equation. Now see this is very important here. If I want that the you know, operating point should stand then basically VTH should have a value that should be slightly greater than 3 voltage. So if I let VTH to be this value then I can approximately find out what is the value of R1 divided by R1 plus R2. So this is the VTH is 3 volt and VCC is 12 volt so I can almost say that R1 by R1 plus R2 is 1 by 4 hmm? that same is happening that same is coming here eh? so from that I can find out the value that means using this equation itself that means from VTH I can find out the relationship between R1 and R2 and using this equation that is using this equation I can find out the value of R2 and R1 so that you need to calculate next we are coming to you know so R1 R2 and RE we have already decided this additional 4 volt peak to peak voltage will give will send this transistor into you know nonlinear region and next we have this LC parallel tank circuit what is the use of it basically as I said the output will contain all the frequencies that is omega 1 omega 2 the addition of omega 1 plus omega 2 the difference omega 1 minus omega 2 and all those frequencies will be present well the mixer does not require it is not required to give you all the frequencies simultaneously you should be able to select frequencies out of the mixer so this LC tank circuit basically helps you to choose which frequency should come outside of the mixer how because we know that the tank circuit has a frequency and mixer basically you know uh, according to the nonlinearity of the transistor basically we will have all these frequencies coming the tank circuit will have a characteristic which looks something like this huh? this is your uh, experiment of the tuned amplifier if you remember this characteristic is the characteristic of the LC tank circuit so if I am you know tuning the LC for a frequency if I am tuning the LC for a frequency which is this value then for that value of L and C I will get I will get the output to be only this the rest of the frequencies you see here are nullified by this character just like that for different values of L and C I can make this frequency change that means I can make this move to any value and the output I will get that value separated out so basically this tank circuit will help you to find out which frequency you want to get at the output that's the design Thank you.